everyone, and welcome to another main SBDC webinar. Today, we're going over an SEO checklist. So we're going to get you ready to embark on 2022 with a solid web presence for your small business. We are joined today by Jenny Green of, uh, I always mess this up, Green and Fisher. <laughs> Fisher Green Creative. Creative. Yes, Fisher Green, I apologize. it's okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, she is really, really great at helping out with marketing topics. So we are, this is a great intro so far. So we're the main small business development centers and we help small businesses with anything you could possibly need. Right now we have uh, several specialists who are helping us out with some more niche things and Jenny is one of those contractors. So we're very lucky to have her here today and helping out over the course of this last year with many of our small businesses. Uh, and so if you are not familiar, we provide free confidential business advising to the small businesses across the state. We have centers all over and business advisors in each center. So you'll be connected with either the closest advisor to you or possibly somebody with a specialization in an area that you're looking for. Um, and so our website has a big orange button on it. It says request advising and we highly recommend that you get set up with a business advisor if you are not already. Um, all of those contacts and links will be included in a follow-up email that you will receive from me. So you don't need to go searching for our website. Um, so later today, I will send out a follow-up email that will include a link to the recording for today's presentation and the slides and any other resources we mentioned. Um, and that link to request advising will be right in that email. Uh, please utilize the chat feature if you have any questions today. Uh, there'll definitely be time at the end for Q&A, so we'll just ask you to stay muted in the meantime. And definitely let us know who you are. Introduce yourself. Uh, let us know your business or your industry that you're in. If you have a website already established, uh, stick that in the chat. Um, if there's one area that you're really struggling with or one specific SEO question, go ahead and pop that in there as well. And otherwise, I think we can go ahead and get started. So I will pass it over to Jenny. Great. Thanks so much. Um, it's so great to be here this morning and really appreciate everyone um, taking time out of your day to, to tune in. So we've got a lot to cover today and I'm hoping um, that we can just dive right in. So um, as Kelsey said, uh, my name is Jenny Green and I'm here to talk today about search engine optimization or SEO for short. And we'll also talk about some quick ways to make a big difference on where your site will show up in search results. So uh, this presentation is specifically for small business owners who are either brand new to the world of SEO or simply want a refresher. We're going to cover a lot of the basics as well as some more technical elements. I hope there'll be a little bit, uh, um, for a little something for everyone here. So we'll talk about some things that are gonna be a little bit more complex and some things that are gonna be a little more straightforward. But my hope is that I'll provide enough resources that you can dig in a little deeper on your own time or certainly reach out with any questions so that I can explain in more detail. Seems like we may have just lost Jenny. So thanks for your patience while we work through this. As we like to say, technology is great uh, when it works. So if you will just bear with us, it looks like she got kicked out of the call. So I appreciate everyone who has introduced themselves in the chat. If you haven't gotten a chance to do the that yet, go ahead and take that opportunity. Uh, got some familiar faces, some uh, some great businesses who I have visited your websites before. So uh, I know that you guys are all working real hard. I'm hoping that Jenny just jumps back on here. 
So again, we do appreciate your patience. I am also learning a great deal about SEO. So I wish that I was knowledgeable enough to answer your questions already, but looks like we've got Jenny back. I am back. I apologize. Let me get set okay. back up. Uh, okay. So we've talked a little bit about what we're going to cover today. That's as far as we, we got. So we, um, we're now going to dive into um, the actual uh, meat of the presentation. So first and foremost, why is SEO or search engine optimization so important? Um, this statistic alone is likely reason enough to pay attention to it. The number one spot on Google gets 32% of clicks. Um, so that alone is a, a, is a good reason uh, for us to talk about this today. Benefits of SEO, statistics aside, um, are the visibility, web traffic, authority, and the improving of customer experience. SEO practices that we're going to talk about today will show how to get these results. But these are the primary benefits that we're after when we're talking about SEO, working on SEO, and understanding why SEO is so important. So let's dig into what SEO is exactly a little more. SEO stands for search engine optimization and is essentially a set of practices you can apply to your website so that search engines like Google and Bing can crawl, index, and rank your content more easily. The overall goal of SEO is to create better websites for human users and search engines. The happier the user, the happier the search engine, and the happier the search engine, the happier the user. So what does it mean when we say crawl, index, and rank? Search engines have a very specific process for analyzing the over 150 trillion website pages on the internet. This process starts with computer programs, sometimes called spider bots or web crawlers, that go out and crawl or find the information. Next, the information is indexed or organized so that it can be further processed. Finally, search engines then rank or prioritize what order to present the information to the person who did the search. The primary reason for not ranking is poor application of SEO practices. The computer algorithms can't find, organize, or prioritize content that isn't available in a way that they can understand it. But don't worry, that's why we're here today. Speaking of search engines, I will be primarily referring to Google today, but know that SEO practices have a positive impact on all search engines. So whether you're uh, ranking on uh, Bing or Yahoo or any of the other um, smaller engines, um, SEO practices work across the board. On that note, let's break down the anatomy of a search engine page result, also known as a SERP on Google. My guess is that most, if not all of you, have used Google and have likely seen a page like this. However, I encourage you to look at it in a new light, visualizing how your site might fit into these results. For demonstration purposes only, I have used the search query, how to create an Instagram story. I typed it in, hit enter, and within a second or less, these are my results. First, we see a paid or sponsored ad, um, and you can identify that by the word ad right there at the top, so you'll know that someone's paying to be in that spot. Note the display next of site links. These are, so this is the primary search result, and then you have these site links. This, these, are, um, these show up because somebody paid for this position, and then they also added these extensions um, onto the ad. This particular post, the person who's running the ad has control over what shows up here. The site links down here in an organic search result are pulled by Google. So most websites don't have any control over what shows up here unless their site is truly optimized for SEO. Site links are essentially links from the same domain that are clustered together under a website result. A web result is to operate like shortcuts. So it just makes it easier for the user to get to specific information in the website without having to start with the primary URL and then clicking on the website. They can do it straight from the Google, uh, Google search results page. And then we note right here, the number one search result um, is in the organic position. So right underneath the, the paid ads, then you get the first organic result. In today's conversation, this is the primary spot that we're looking to achieve. 
Um, so anything that we're talking about today is going to skip over this paid ad. That's another conversation for another day. And we're going to look at trying to get into this organic ranking position. Now, if we keep scrolling on that same search query, we'll find organic position number two, followed by a trending on Bing section. Google throws in suggestions like this to provide more search opportunities for the user and to test user behavior. Next on this particular SERP is a featured result. That's the section right here, or it starts with a list. How, here's how to create the story. This feature is in a list format, a new trend that is very popular on Google um, search results. Other kinds of featured results include paragraphs, maps, show times, menus, videos. It can be in any kind of format, but what Google does is they pick what they wanna show here because this is a great search uh, result for the user according to its algorithms. Uh, the users themselves don't really have a lot of control over um, landing this featured position, um, but if your site is optimized, you have a good chance of making that happen. By the way, you can leave Google feedback on these should you be interested in improving your own search experience. And that's in these little gray sub menus right below the featured snippet. Um, you can click on that. And if you give feedback, then your own user experience will be better. Um, this featured result also happens to be organic search result number three. So we've, where this was number two, this is number three. Evidently, this particular blog post about Instagram stories was seen by Google as really helpful, and therefore it decided to feature this post for this search query. Now we keep scrolling. We're still on page one of the search result. We next see video results with a display of helpful details about the video. Users can now better assess if clicking on that video will give them what they want. While these video results are further down the page, they are still in the enviable ranking positions of number one, two, and three, and so on. There are ways to optimize your videos on YouTube that will help you rank here, but that's another presentation for another day. We keep scrolling, uh, again, still on the same first page um, of the search query. Google then serves up the most common search results that we're kind of used to. So these are the ones that we typically see. Uh, this list can um, include a number of, um, of different results, uh, but it's, they're further down the page. And these, even these being on the first page, will be lucky if they get a lot of traffic uh, because this is, again, this is two screens down from the initial um, search result. And then let's break down the anatomy of the, this typical search result. It includes the page URL, page title, the page description, otherwise known as the meta description. This information is pulled directly from the website and the website owner has full control, or, full control over these three pieces. So this is where you do have a lot of control. If you've optimized your site, your uh, URL, your page title and your description, Google will pull that information word for word. And it looks like I've got a little issue with a, um, I don't know if you can see the highlighted box um, it, on my screen, it's hidden. Um, but what that is, is I, all I've done is enlarge this bottom um, 22 Instagram stories um, hacks that will blow your mind. So that last result, I just made that a little bit bigger in that box so you can see it. And the reason why I pointed that out is because you can see that it has an SEO friendly URL, a catchy page title, and a concise descriptive, um, a concise and descriptive meta description. And that's the meta description is the sentence that describes the, the uh, result. Finally, we get to the end of page one. Um, that's a lot of scrolling and a lot of results on one page. Uh, basic organic website results complete the first page, but then Google does one more thing. It gives you some alternate search, search suggestions, probably because it knows that most people don't click past the first page. While this isn't good news for businesses who are not ranking on the first page, you can use these suggestions as inspiration for creating content for your site, since Google is telling you here that they are popular related searches. Just be sure to start with a search query that's relevant to your business or your audience. So again, using this information as inspiration, and perhaps if you post content about these, you might show up on the first page for these search results. Uh, 
Uh, last, um, uh, lastly, I just want to point out that um, there are ways to tweak the search results. Um, I encourage you to give this a try when you're experimenting with how um, Google works and how Google displays search results. Um, so scrolling way back up to the top again, I clicked this um, descriptive word um, that was suggested by Google. And I, when I hit unique as an option, it recategorized and restructured my search results. And all of a sudden, the um, the uh, search result that we were just talking about in the last screen now shows up in the number one search position. So there are ways to experiment with ranking, um, and there are different ways, um, and we'll get to this in a little bit um, in more detail, uh, ways to add different words to your search query that will give you that number one position. Um, so experiment, experiment, experiment. And again, I'd just like to um, mention here that the reason why I'm going into such detail about this is to get an understanding of what we're trying to accomplish by implementing SEO practices on your website. This is what it translates to. And I think um, being a very visual person myself, this helps give us um, that real visual idea of what we're trying to achieve when we're adding those um, technical pieces and we're adding the content. Um, this is where we want it to show up and this is how we want it to show up. Um, okay, so last but not least, um, note the different ways that different kinds of search queries populate, uh, particularly with local or brick and mortar searches. With appropriate SEO applications that we are going to talk about today, Google will understand your business and then find, organize, and prioritize your information for the user accordingly. So we can see here I did main SBDC. Um, it brought up a, a kind of different search results page. Um, I typed in how to fix a leaky faucet. Um, I got right off the bat um, some suggestions for um, plumbers. And then below that were some articles on actually how to do it, how to um, make those fixes. And then I did restaurants near me and immediately maps with the listings. Um, so again, by optimizing your site for your particular industry and business, we'll give Google the right information so that they can populate your content in the right positions accordingly. Um, by the way, um, I've talked a lot about computer algorithms and crawlers, um, but it is important to know that Google does use actual humans to help assess with Google Sites. Um, they have a whole guideline um, uh, that they use, that, and they use users from around the globe um, to assess and test different sites and search results and search experiences. And I highly recommend following, uh, checking out this helpful resource. It is the guide that they use to, for their raters use to assess sites. Um, it's very comprehensive, it's very technical, but there's a lot of information to glean from it, and it does give you uh, the guidelines that Google is using. Um, and by the way, um, almost all the things that we're going to talk about today um, can be applied to any website. The actual process of implementing some of these changes will involve editing in the back end of your site. Um, website builders such as Squarespace, Wix, Shopify, Weebly, et cetera, et cetera um, typically have a dedicated SEO section. If you have WordPress, we recommend installing the Yoast SEO premium plugin and using that software to help implement some of today's suggestions. Um, so it is um, helpful to have some backend knowledge of your site um, because some of this information uh, will need to happen in that backend section. Okay, so let's really dive in now. Uh, one of the most critical steps in working on an SEO strategy is identifying your keywords. What are keywords, you ask? Keywords or phrases are ideas and topics that define what your content is about. In terms of SEO, they're the words that they're the words and phrases that search engines. Sorry, <laughs> in terms of SEO, they're the words and phrases that searchers enter into search engines. Each page of your website, from the home page to individual blog pages, should have its own assigned keyword. In a moment, I'll talk about how to apply those keywords, but the first step is simply coming up with words that are relevant to what people are searching for and relevant to your page content so that your content populates. At this point, it's, under, it's important to understand that there are no best keywords. According to HubSpot, which is a big marketing firm, um, very well known for um, its leadership in the marketing um, industry, uh, according to them, the keywords that matter the most are the ones that your customers are searching for. 
With that in mind, your strategy should take into account relevance, meaning it matches what the user is looking for, authority, meaning you have some level of expertise in the field, and volume, meaning that people are actually searching for it in high numbers. Additionally, you should take into consideration the level of competition and the quality of your own content. Let's say you run a bakery. Highly searched keywords might be bakeries in Portland or bakeries near me. It's likely that you could compete for those terms. You would then look at um, other bakeries and what they're producing uh, that helps them rank. Then you simply do better. Perhaps it's about blogging about your favorite uh, recipes or um, maybe blogging about walking tours um, that include the bakery shop, but you're basically producing content that might be relevant to those search terms that you can compete for. So how do you actually find these keywords? Here are some quick tips. Make a list of important relevant topics based on what you know about your business. Fill in those topic lists with more specific keywords and phrases. Think about how search intent affects the use of the keyword. Type it into Google and see what comes up, for example. Research related search terms. Uh, use keyword research tools to your advantage. Think of using keywords that will capture audiences be time, beyond a one-time event. Narrow down choices further based on additional research. Don't just guess. Fill in those topic lists with more specific keywords and phrases. Prioritize low-hanging fruit. This means it's better to rank for something initially than nothing. Don't forget to factor in the SERP features that we reviewed just a, a few minutes ago, um, how your, your content will show up on, online, whether it's in that brick and mortar search or whether it's in a, an organic position um, or a featured snippet. Um, you wanna consider that when you're picking your keywords. Then check for a mix of keywords and long tail phrases. Long tail phrases are more like sentences versus a two or three word phrase. Experiment, again, typing them into Google, see what happens, see if it fits your search queries that you come up with. Um, experiment, experiment, experiment. You also wanna see how competitors are ranking for these keywords so you know what you're up against. So when you type in those keywords into Google, are your competitors coming up? Um, experiment with things that you might not even use and see if your competitors are coming up. Um, of course, there's also keyword tools that will make that search much easier. And here's a list of some very popular ones. Um, I've dabbled in almost all of them. Um, it really just depends on uh, which ones are most intuitive and affordable for you. Some of these are free. The paid versions tend to be a little more comprehensive. Um, so to experiment with a few of them, simply um, type the names into Google and they'll pop up because they're that popular. Um, but I have on the next slide uh, listed our favorite one. Uh, we use Uber Suggest. It's easy. Um, it has a free high level service that gives, it gives us basically everything we know. Uh, you go to uh, this URL, um, you type in keywords, experiment, hit enter. And then what happens is it populates information. Uh, that you can use to make a decision whether or not to assign a specific keyword to a specific page. As an example, for demonstration purposes only, let's take a keyword search we might do for a client who sells insurance. Let's start with the term disability insurance, which is what we typed in here. Uh, we quickly see that there's plenty of search volume, 27,000 a month. Um, but the SEO difficulty, which is 74 out of 100, is pretty difficult. Um, or, and maybe this client doesn't have um, a huge budget. So we might want to refine this keyword to something that's a little bit more manageable. So because they focus just in Maine, for example, we added that disability insurance in Maine. And all of a sudden, we get down to a very easy um, SEO um, position where it'd be very easy for them to rank number one. The search volume is a little low, but for a small insurance agency, if they got 10 searches a month and half of those became clients, that would be a pretty good return on investment. Um, so again, this is where we use this information to assess the search volume, the SEO difficulty, how hard is it going to be to rank for that? And then this particular um, tool gives you um, how hard it will be to uh, rank and what it will cost. Um, in a more competitive field, um, in a paid ad, um, to get your content out in front of everyone um, is a, a difficulty level of 59, and it's going to cost you about $13 per click. So it's a little bit on the higher end. Down here, we can almost advertise next for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. 
So covered keywords, um, a quick reminder before we get too far past that, just remember that your keywords, um, you each page of your website needs to have an assigned keyword. So as you're developing your keyword list, take into account how many pages your website has, and that's how many keywords you'll need to identify as your, as your leading group um, of rankable terms. Now, before you do anything else, when it comes to SEO, it is critical that you take care of these tasks. So if you do nothing else beyond today's presentation, this is the page to pay attention to. Um, so you need to uh, verify your website with Google Search Console, add and verify your website with Bing Webmaster Tools, set up Google Analytics and learn how to use the basic SEO reports. It's not as hard as it looks, I promise. Claim your Google business listing. Um, I re uh, in this slide, I've included the links for how to um, do all of those steps. Um, so hopefully it'll be very straightforward. Um, but again, highlight, bookmark this page. This one is really important. Um, next, we're going to talk about the three primary categories of SEO, um, technical SEO, on-page SEO, and off-page SEO. Let's get going. So technical SEO. The primary goal of technical SEO is to help search engines find, assess, crawl, interpret, and index your website without any problems. It's called technical because it has little to do with the actual content of your website or any website promotions. Um, it's more about the backend setup. This section is going to be a little heavy, but bear with me. You can do this, and I've got lots of resources coming your way. So this is page one of four of the SEO, the technical SEO checklist. Uh, for this um, section, I'm going to provide a lot of resources and a lot of resources and assign you some homework. For each task that I don't cover in more detail, you'll see a tip with a link to read more. I've selected articles that I think do a really great job of explaining that topic to the beginner SEO user. But let's definitely cover a few basics. In the first action, uh, SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer, a global standard security technology. This comes standards, uh, standard these days with most website builders, such as Shopify and Squarespace. But if your website is missing this, investigate ASAP. That's the S in the HTTP in your URL. So you want to make sure that that S is there. Um, again, that's just a security layer um, that goes a long way in your SEO um, optimization. Um, after you get your Google Search Console connected, which I mentioned in the page, um, the most important task list, um, check your coverage report and fix errors accordingly. There's a section right as you log into Google Search Console uh, that says uh, search uh, coverage. You click that and it'll run the report and then give you ideas for fixing. There's also a tip here for how to do that. You want to check and optimize your robots text file. Um, this is the file that tells search engine crawlers which URLs the crawler can and should access on your site. It's really helpful for, for faster and more accurate crawling. Again, it sounds really fancy and technical, um, but this article is a great resource and will walk you through um, how simple it actually is. It's literally just a file that you can pull and send um, to Google to give them an idea of what to crawl. Um, next, um, we want to implement um, in your um, comment section on your blog, if you have one, a nofollow um, setting um, on any links that might show up. A nofollow link is a link that does not count um, on a page, doesn't count towards a page's uh, ranking. And this is important for any potential spammy comments or links that might be left in the comments. You don't want to be associated with those in the eyes of search engines. Um, so by adding the nofollow, Google knows that they're, they're not associated with you. And by the way, a do follow link are those that Google are those that allow Google and other search engines to point back to your website or blog. So every time you insert a do follow link on your site, it can point back to you, which strengthens your authority by showing search engines what other sites, blogs, and posts are linking to you. You can make these designations in the back end of your site. And so with a couple, a little bit of research, that will show you how to do that. Again, continuing with the technical piece, um, and then I promise we're going to get to some really easy options, um, so don't be intimidated. These things are, um, I promise, much easier than they sound initially, um, especially if you're just getting started with SEO. Uh, but bear with me, uh, we'll go through this because I do think that these are important things to, to be aware of 
um, as you go through your SEO journey. Um, so on this page, page 204, um, we're going to talk about the, uh, the XML sitemap. Uh, this is a file that lists a website's important pages, making sure Google can find and crawl them all. It also helps search engines understand your website structure. You can check for errors um, on your sitemap in the search console as well. The structured data markup is when you mark up elements on your web pages so that Google can, Google can understand the, uh, the data on that page. This is yet another way to help Google understand your page data more clearly so it can be, be presented more attractively and in new ways in, in Google search. So think of featured snippets that we talked about before. Um, this is the kind of information that helps you uh, land in one of those, um, those positions. Breadcrumbs are a secondary navigation aid that help users easily understand the relation between their location on a page, like a product page, and a higher level page, like a category page. Um, so if you think when you're shopping, sometimes at the top you'll see a menu where you can see where you've clicked um, from the home page to the shoe page to the sneaker page and then to the Nike page and then to the high top Air Jordan page. Um, and you can see that little menu right at the top under the main primary um, uh, menu. And this just gives users the opportunity to click back and kind of understand where they are in the navigation. Um, this is a great feature and can be implemented again on the back end of your site. Um, a Kanoki can, can, cannot, I'm not even going to try to say it, URL is a technical solution for duplicate content. This tag is a way of telling search engines that a specific URL represents the master copy of a page. You might, for instance, have a post or product that is attached to two categories and exists under two URLs. It's important to tell search engines which one to prioritize. So for example, let's say you sell t-shirts and you have a red t-shirt and a blue t-shirt. You want Google to identify the main t-shirt page as the primary page to index and the red t-shirt and the blue t-shirt are the sub pages. They do not hold this kind of goal. I'm not, I'm so sorry. I do not know how to pronounce this word um, URL. Um, so that um, is important to tell Google so that it does prioritize the right product listing or the right page and not those sub pages so that the red t-shirt doesn't continue to hold that number one spot, but rather the primary t-shirt page does. Um, next, um, if, your lang if your website needs to be in um, more than one language, um, the hreflang is a very important feature to implement. Um, it allows um, Google to understand the language and the geographical targeting of your website. Um, this is one of the uh, very most technical pieces of this technical SEO checklist. So if you do have that need, um, this would be a place where I would actually encourage some outside support unless you have a lot of experience with coding and feel comfortable with the backend uh, language. Um, a little easier is the 404 page. Um, this is known as an error page or page not found. Um, this, is, this page indicates that the user reached the domain they requested, but the URL path or the, the specific piece of content that they're looking for is not there. It's important to pay attention here because error pages often lead to users leaving the site altogether and that in, impacts your search rank, ranking and user experience. Definitely check out some examples um, of really great 404 pages in the link I provided because you can make them really fun. So if a, a website user gets to a 404 page on your website, if it's fun and engaging and provides additional information, they're more likely to keep clicking and realize that they just got to a page by accident that's not there, um, but they should really keep going going. It's also really important to make sure um, that you ha have optimized your logo, images, and videos across your site for alt text, size, loading speed, captions, and more. If not loaded properly, they can impact site speed and user experience. A favicon is the image that populates in the tab that you have open in your browser. If you're like me, you might have a lot of browsers open all at one time. And those little favicons, uh, the little logos that populate, make it easy to jump back and forth um, between the page quickly. Um, Google is also thinking of sharing these in search results. Um, so it's important to go ahead and get ahead of the game and add one to your site. Okay, so this is page four or four of our technical SEO checklist. Um, I'm gonna go into these in a little bit more detail in these next slides. 
So checking your permalink structure and uh, making your URLs SEO friendly is a critical piece of SEO. A permalink is the URL of the web page. It's called permalink because it's not expected to change during the lifetime of the page. You want to make sure that the URL for each page includes your keyword that you've identified for that page and is SEO friendly. So how do you make an SEO, um, how do you make a URL SEO friendly? Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, they are short and descriptive. They include keywords found on the page and they match the page title. So this would be a good one. This would be a not so good one because it's not clear to the user uh, what that URL um, is going to lead them to. Next, optimize your website menu or navigation and site structure. No one should have to click more than three times to get where they wanna go. And here's an example. Uh, on, your, on your homepage, you might list your primary categories with one being identified as services, for example. If a user clicks on services, that's their first click, they might then be taken to a page that talks about all the services you offer. When the user sees a service that they like, they may click on that one for more information, i.e. their second click. They read all about it and they're ready to book. Um, and so then they might click the book service link and that's their third and final click. Depending on the size of your site, this map could be quite large, uh, but there's nothing more frustrating to a user who can't find what they're looking for and fast. So it really is important to make sure that you limit the, uh, the depth of your website to three, three clicks or less. Um, and there's a great free site map tool to use. You can plug it in. It's very visual, enter different page layouts, and it helps you organize your, your menu and your navigation strategy. The last part of this technical SEO section is checking and improving the loading speed of your website. Website speed refers to how quickly a browser is able to load your site for the viewer. If load time takes more than two to three seconds, your viewer has likely moved on to the next search result. Google also assesses your site speed for um, ranking. Um, so not only does it impact the user experience, but it does significantly impact where you're gonna show up in search results. And the proof is in the numbers, ouch. 20%, a one second delay in mobile load times can impact conversions by 20%. Um, so you might be missing out on a lot of business um, if you don't have a fast site. Um, you can use some free tools around the web to find out how fast your site is actually performing. Um, some of those reports will give you ways to fix, um, some won't, um, but it is important to identify where, how fast you're going um, and prioritize making those fixes as soon as possible. Another thing um, around site speed that you might hear from time to time is the new feature Google has introduced called Google Core Website Vitals. Um, these are metrics that help score um, the user's experience based on loading speed. Um, there is some uh, rumblings in the SEO world that this may or may not be as important um, as it was when it was first introduced uh, because the metrics that they're using are not easy to understand and it does, does not translate to everyday uh, language. So um, do some reading, be familiar, understand um, that again, this is primarily based on website speed and your primary goal here is to make your website load faster. Now we're going to talk about the second category, on-page SEO. This is all about the content of your pages, and it is my favorite part of SEO, if I'm honest. It has one major goal, to help you create content that satisfies the user um, intent and the search engines. In my opinion, this is where the human experience matters more, though. Mm -hmm. So this is the first page on our on-page uh, SEO checklist. I'm going to go into all of these in a bit more detail here in a minute. So I'm going to skip over this. Um, we'll come back to these. Uh, the second page of your on-page SEO checklist, um, I'll cover these quickly here. Um, even though Google and other search engines can't see, quote unquote, your formatting and styling, it can assess if a user is engaged and enjoying the experience that they are having on your site, usually by the way of time spent on the site and by clicks to the site. It is assumed then that the appealing design and style will enhance the user experience and therefore benefit SEO. 
Be sure to add alternate text or alt text to your images. Google can't read images with, uh, that have text in them, so you need to make sure that you program this into the back end of your site so that Google can crawl uh, that copy um, and understand what your particular images and videos um, are, are saying um, in the graphic. Um, category pages often used in e-commerce are often forgotten, so be sure to optimize those as well. Um, okay, so back to the first section of our on-page SEO checklist. Um, I have to admit that I am truly obsessed with this concept and not just because I love food. Um, I love the fact that this really um, speaks to the human experience. The, um, the EAT um, is a metric that Google has implemented um, that in SEO terms stands for expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Google has recently indicated in its guidelines that this will will be very important in um, search engine ranking factors. Um, so expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. It is literally one of the top three considerations. Google states that EAT is among the top three considerations for page quality. So if you haven't been paying attention to EAT uh, content before, you should start doing so immediately. And essentially what this means is making your content, that's just what you're presenting, the copy, the pictures, um, the way that this design is laid out in a way that proves that you are an expert, um, that you're an authority, and that you're trustworthy in the material that you're presenting to your potential customers. So a little backstory, EAT is closely related to what Google calls your money or your life pages. YMYL pages are those that have topics on medical advice, legal advice, financial advice, or anything that could positively or negatively affect a user's happiness, health, or wealth. It's likely those kinds of sites already meet EAT standards, but by introducing EAT, there is now another assessment layer that allows more genuine, good intention sites to rank on Google. So you don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer or in order to have the same level of authority on Google now. Um, it's giving us another opportunity to really just be genuine and therefore be rewarded in SEO results. So in other words, websites and web pages should be created to help users. And if that's what you're doing, um, that's going to go a long way. And specifically, the page should fulfill its intended purpose honestly and authentically. And that purpose also should be user-centered, whether that is to make readers laugh, sell them something, and for them, teach them, et cetera. Again, it's all about getting back to the basics of well-intentioned, good purpose, um, and uh, goals and missions. So if you're true to who you are as a business and you're doing what you do best, then that's going to go a long way in Google's eyes thanks to this new EAT ranking system. Okay, so the last couple of slides were a little more philosophical, but I have some tangible ways that we can now apply them to on-page elements. First, optimize your page titles. You can enter this on the back end of your site and remember that they are visible to search bots and then those search results. So at the very beginning, we highlighted this, the page titles. Uh, this is the point where you actually enter them in. Uh, so again, just a refresher, you can see the page title there. Uh, the quick, this is a quick flashback to the anatomy of that page, uh, search page engine, um, uh, search engine results. Um, and remember that you need to apply this to each and every page of your website. Um, make sure that they accurately describe the page content and they should be brief, typically 60 characters or less. Next, optimize the meta description uh, descriptions. These will help get people to click on your links um, in search results and help you actually show up in those search results. And again, just a reminder, these are the meta descriptions. It's those sentences right under the URL in a search result. Each and every page of your website should have a unique one. Um, they should describe the page accurately. And another quick tip is to use active voice and make it actionable or include a call to, uh, include a call to action. 
And just to give this process some context, I'm sharing a sample of where you would enter the page title and meta descriptions in WordPress and Squarespace. Wix, Weebly, Shopify, et cetera, are not shown here, but we'll look a little bit more like the Squarespace example. Um, so you can see here, I log into the back end of uh, WordPress, which is what we use. There's a place for me to enter the page title, uh, also update uh, the, the URL, um, and also enter the meta description. And again, same in the Squarespace example. Um, you click through here to add the page title um, and then under SEO is the description and so on and so forth. So this just helps give you some context of where you're entering that information. Okay, this is kind of a trick slide. You can't really do anything to optimize your site um, to have Google pick you for those site links that we um, talked about earlier in the presentation. But if you're doing everything else right um, up to this point with those meta titles and descriptions and the right content, um, then it's likely that Google will pull accurate info and create them for you. Uh, but we are still going to strive to make that happen because those site links are really helpful. They increase um, click-through rates, and um, the more we can do to make that happen, the better. So again, uh, make sure that page titles and headings are informative, uh, relevant, and compact. Ensure that internal links anchored. Um, Ensure that the internal links anchor text is concise and relevant to the page that they're pointing to and avoid repetition. Um, so each page should be unique. Um, there's some additional information in this helpful resource that's worth checking out as well. Okay, so this is a fun way to help your site rank. Um, use a blog post to create relevant, helpful, trustworthy uh, list of how to um, do something. Uh, the, the snippets pull from information that's easy to digest. Um, so I highly encourage putting out a few blog posts or a few pages um, that include um, uh, that list and how to um, and more information so that again, uh, we increase your chances for being pulled for one of those featured snippets um, and show up in that list format that we talked about earlier. Um, so who doesn't like, um, you know, glancing quickly for answers? Again, just more information about how to help your site and your page um, show up in this particular featured snippet. Um, I, I, again, just keep digging, keep working um, at uh, creating content that will meet these parameters, and it's likely that Google will pull you for one of those. Another really quick fix um, that has a decent impact on SEO is optimizing your headings on your website pages. The H1 tag, as it's called, is referring to the first element of copy that the user sees and is generally the same as the page title that we talked about earlier that you entered in the back end. Uh, for example, here you can see the H1 tag or heading on one of my recent blog posts right here. Um, that's the heading, and I designated it as an H1 when I was formatting it when I went to post it. Um, it's in the, uh, basically, as you would format either paragraph, and you can choose um, heading one, heading two, heading three, and, and so on and so forth. Google and the reader sees that immediately and understands what the page is about. Um, so it's important that every one of your pages on your website um, has a designated H1 tag or heading uh, when you're formatting your website copy. Again, you can use this just as context. This is a WordPress, um, an Elementor theme. Um, this is a Squarespace um, example, just where you showing where you would designate that H1 tag or heading. Um, and then, of course, a helpful resource um, to read more about that. Additionally, you should also include other kinds of headings. So I just talked about the H1, uh, but Google has indicated a preference of seeing a heading like an H2 or H3 every 150 words or so. The reason is that users like to skim website text before reading it. Um, headings also break up large chunks of text and therefore improve the user experience and therefore improve um, the SEO. They also give crawlers more um, information and details. Um, those heading tags just identify key concepts a little more clearly than large chunks of paragraph text. 
Um, quick tips, um, you don't have to overdo it with the headings though. Um, again, the whole foundation of this on-page SEO is making it user-friendly and being user-centered. Um, so if it doesn't make sense to use the heading, don't use it um, just because you think it might be good for SEO. Use it based on what's best for the reader and the person who's consuming the content. Um, another easy one, um, weave that keyword into the opening paragraph of its designated page. It's okay to use the keyword again throughout the page, but it's important to use copy um, authentically to expand on the topic. These days, write the primary text for the human reader, um, just being sure to include that keyword in the opening paragraph to meet the computer element. Another on-page SEO tactic, um, internal linking. Um, this is where you simply link anchor text in your website copy to another part of your website. For example, if I were writing my blog um, about marketing tips and, and in it I mentioned SEO, um, I might link the, the word SEO to our SEO services page or maybe to our SEO um, blog topics um, so that the reader can click and then get more information but still stay on, on my website. It's also um, important to link to other um, uh, outbound um, website or other external um, sites. They're called outbound links. Um, this is when you do the same process that we just talked about with internal linking, except this time you're linking to other websites that have authority. Uh, for example, if I were writing that same blog about marketing tips, um, but mentioned a favorite keyword, uh, favorite keyword tool that I like to use, such as Uber Suggest, I would hyperlink that part of the text to that tool's website so that the user could quickly um, click on that and get to the tool and access it. Again, improving the user experience. Um, Google also sees that connection to the, uh, the other website as a good thing. Okay, so we're to the final um, category, off-page SEO. Um, and this, we're almost done now. Um, this last stretch talks briefly about um, a technique that where website promotion, um, it's about website promotion primarily. Um, off-page SEO is a technique that happens elsewhere, as in not on your site, but on other websites that link back to, to your site. And this is a short one, um, and we may not have um, enough time today to go into a lot of detail, but I'll do my best to give you as much information here as possible. Um, and certainly uh, be sure to investigate the tips that I've linked to here as well. Um, essentially, off-page SEO is a crucial part of the, um, the SEO strategy and actually may be one of the most important. So while I didn't give a, a lot of attention today, it is really crucial that once you've solidified the first two pieces um, of SEO strategies, the, um, the technical and the on-page, don't forget to come back and address the off-page SEO. In a nutshell, link building is the process of getting other sites to link back to you. And this is really critical for driving traffic, for ranking, for helping Google understand how you're connected to uh, the industry that you're in, because ideally you'd be getting links from other relevant sources. Um, so again, just really emphasizing that this is a crucial and critical um, part of your SEO strategy, um, but the other pieces need to come first. Um, so first and foremost, it's important to understand what link building is and why it's important. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out the tip provided here. Um, sometimes um, uh, getting these getting these uh, links is very challenging um, and it's tempting to um, pay to get them, but the idea is to have other people want to link to your website without even having to ask. So that goes back to becoming an authority um, and being trustworthy and an expert in your particular industry. Um, however, there are some tips to make in making that happen and I definitely recommend checking out this resource uh, for how to get them from high authority websites that would be really good for your SEO. And again, uh, linking is when another website puts your URL on their website so that their readers can click back to your website and learn more about you. 
Um, another part of this is to uh, remove any kind of bad links that might be associated with your website. Um, sometimes you might have these from spammy sites, um, you have no control over it, um, but they are bad in Google's eyes and you may not even know that you have them. Um, you can check out the resource here um, to figure out how to check to see if you have any and then how to disassociate yourself from those low, low quality sites or spammy bad links if, if applicable. Um, last but not least, um, social media can also play a factor in your off-page SEO efforts. Definitely check out the link there on how um, social media plays a part in your off-page SEO. Um, and just a little bit more information again, because I really want to emphasize that even though we didn't spend a lot of time covering this part today, um, the backlinking um, or link building, as it's called, um, is a really crucial part um, of your SEO strategy. So again, just some more information about what link building is and why it's important. And uh, just a reminder to make sure you come back and check this out. Okay, we covered a lot, um, but I am still confident that you can do most of this stuff yourself. Um, it's just a matter of using the resources um, provided um, and really be, uh, spending the time and energy to become familiar with SEO strategies and the jargon uh, that surrounds it. Um, most important part is to remember that if you run a small business and you are doing the, this yourself, um, that the, this is a marathon and not a sprint. Um, sometimes results can take months and months, um, so don't get discouraged by your efforts, such as the nature of the beast. There are some elements I fully recognize that this is a little overwhelming and um, at first glance a lot of this, um, it feels like a lot. Um, Google has a really great resource to help you determine whether or not you really do need to hire out some of these um, strategies or whether or not you can do it yourself. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out this article, uh, just some really valuable tips and, and helpful um, direction on where to go from here. Now, um, if you can believe it, um, or we still have a lot more to cover when it comes to SEO, but we are not going to get to that today. Um, but if you're uh, um, invested and you're really ready to take on the next step, um, I would definitely recommend checking out these key topics when it comes to SEO. Accessibility and how that will impact your ranking, uh, local SEO strategies, um, there are things like directory listings um, that can be implemented, um, again, doing some research around specific tactics uh, with a local uh, strategy, making sure that your website is optimized for mobile, uh, managing your reputation, um, reviews are everything, and Google does take that into consideration uh, when ranking your site. Uh, it's also important to understand how paid ads impact organic SEO. Um, and um, it, it, the, uh, the going idea, I should say, is that it doesn't impact it, um, but some it's a little suspect. Um, if you pay Google, and one would think that maybe they'll rank you a little higher organically, um, but technically that should not is not supposed to be the case. Um, but it is good to understand that if paid ads um, might help you get that first ad spot, but how it also does impact your organic SEO. Um, you also want to implement a privacy policy in terms of service and other small features like that that could have an impact on SEO. Again, doing a little research around those topics. And then, of course, uh, voice search. Um, more and more users are now um, speaking into their series and their Alexas um, to get information from the internet. And so the way that people speak a voice search is different than the way they type it. And so optimizing your site um, accordingly will be um, the next wave of SEO optimization. And that is a wrap. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. Um, thank you for your patience for some of the technical difficulties. Um, certainly happy to answer um, any questions at this point. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you for your patience and your flexibility. Um, like I said, I will be sending a follow-up email that includes a link to the recording and the slides. So if there were any links that you were frantically trying to write down you didn't get, don't worry, we're going to send all of those to you. Um, it is 10 o'clock, so we know you're all busy business owners. You have lots to do, so if you have to jump off that's fine. Uh, Jenny and I are going to stay on and answer any questions that 
come up. There are some in the chat, so feel free to pop those in there, but we're getting lots of thank yous, excellent presentation, excellent resources. So uh, Kathy says, thank you so much. Now the work begins, which <laughs> is probably the most accurate. Uh, so right. uh, one thing that popped up very early on was about the add-on, I believe it was Yoast. Um, someone was asking the difference between the paid and the free version. We weren't sure if you might have any information about that. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, there is a free version and if nothing else, definitely use that. Um, the paid version just has a lot more automation um, in the support. Um, so for example, it will actually provide keyword suggestions for you and it will identify in more detail some of the SEO issues that your site has. So if you can, um, splurge for the premium, it's well worth the time that it would save you and doing some of the work for you. There we go. Um, and then again, these were a while back and I don't remember exactly when they came in, but uh, what, how do you determine when to put a do follow and a no follow, which I, I remember us talking about, but. Yeah, um, it's primarily just knowing or, or um, deciding whether or not you want Google to consider that link uh, as part of your SEO strategy. So if it's a good link and you want to be associated with it, then do follow. Um, if it's a link that you really don't want it to have any impact on your search results, then it would be a no follow. And so it's just really kind of good, bad. There you go. So you <laughs> so Jenny, it's Chris. I asked that question. So this is something where you're pretty much um, keeping track of those links, there's not a way to like, like, do not follow like spam, you know, like there's a spam identifier that you don't want things in. So it's, it's like you have to self filter. Is that what you're saying? You can't just, yeah. And, like, and you know, Exactly. And there, there may be some more advanced technical tools available. Um, so I, I would actually have to ask Kathy, my um, business partner, who's uh, even more of an expert in SEO, whether there's any kind of application that you could put on a website to automatically apply those do follow and no follows, but it is a manual setting. Um, and you should, should self monitor just to be safe so that you have more control over the links um, that you're putting on your site. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, do the number of previous clicks contribute to the ranking of your site? Yes. Um, website traffic, the more traffic you have, the better your site's going to rank. Um, and then photos or graphics impact download speeds or just the server speed? I think they're asking, is it? Um, so this, we're primarily worried in SEO about the loading speed um, for the user. So when you go to you click on a link, um, however long it takes for all of those graphics to fully populate for the best user experience is the speed that we're most concerned about. Um, the download speed, so if you see a graph, like say so you have a PDF and it takes a while to download, that's not the issue. It's more the uploading of the website when a user clicks on it and how much of the site they can see and how quickly. Um, and then on on your internal links, do you set it up to open on a new tab or stay on the site? Uh, she was saying that for external links, she always has them open a new page so that they're not leaving the site. Yes. Um, so there's a little. Um, uh, there's a little bit uh, uh, to consider here uh, because of accessibility issues. Um, so people who use screen readers uh, really need all of the content that they're reviewing to stay on the same window. Um, otherwise, um, your accessibility ranking then starts to become impacted. Um, but of course, the nature, um, it, it's just natural to want extra links to open another page so that your page stays open and the user stays there. So you have to kind of weigh up um, internal links can just open up in the same window. That is best practice. So if you're linking internally, you, you want to keep them in that same window. Um, and that's also good for screen readers. The external links, um, again, just being considerate that the screen readers are going to have trouble and therefore anyone who is visually impaired is going to have a hard time with that experience. Um, so it's just weighing up that, again, um, being as accessible as possible to as many users as possible is, is, is a consideration. And, and eventually, actually as accessibility standards become more um, and more required, um, that will have to happen anyway. Yeah, I noticed that on your last list, so I was 
pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. to see that. Mm -hmm. um, great. Um, Nick says, thank you for the presentation. Since SEO optimization takes such a long time to show results, how often should you update your SEO strategy? Mm, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, so uh, that's a really great question, actually. The yeah, uh, there's different elements of well, there because there are so many pieces. Um, there are so many different parts will need to be updated um, at different times at different places. Um, so it's really the keywords are probably the ones that I would pay most attention to most frequently. Um, so as search um, volumes change, uh, as that changes, um, as keywords change, um, those are the pieces that are going to be the most important to review more frequently. Um, I think you could review your keyword strategy um, every three to four months and still be on top of the game um, and then make uh, that'll have a trickle down effect um, based on you know page content page titles if you're updating your, your keywords of course um, but I think that um, a, a complete overhaul I don't think is needed you know um, maybe once um, a year um, based on performance you know really just diving in again you know doing that that full um, basically starting at the beginning of this presentation and moving back through it again um, but I, again the keywords are where I would say uh, really spend the most time after you do all these initial setups um, that's where I would review every couple months just to really make uh, make sure that you're still in the running with the keywords that you've picked that they still make sense, that the volume is still there, and so on and so forth. That all makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then it looks like the last question here is about photos. And does is SEO impacted if you use stock images versus your own? No. Um, the, the only way that, not from an SEO technical point of view uh, by any stretch, um, the only way that it may impact is just the user experience. Um, because again, we're adding uh, this human element into the um, search results um, because it's just really shifting to what is the user experiencing and how positive is that so are stock photos really meeting the needs of the user? Um, and if so, then great. Um, if they're missing the mark, then that's where there would be a potential risk um, if the user isn't as engaged in the stock photos as they may be in their own um, in the original unique content. But in terms of the actual technical image itself, no impact. Well, I don't see any other questions, but if anyone has anything, feel free to shout it out or pop it in there but as a general view i think we we did it today you know we faced some uphill battles but generally we figured things out as we went like small business owners do yeah. uh and i think we all did a great job so uh you've already done it it's like 10 o'clock you've already done it as a business owner today you've uh you've done your best so just keep it up have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you at the next event. Okay, thanks so much. Have a great day.